In this tutorial, I'll show you how to animate frame by frame in Krita, as well as how to draw your character once and then move their body parts with motion tweens. Krita, if you didn't know, is a free Photoshop-like program that you can animate in. You can download it for free from krita.org. The version I'm using is 5.1.0. I am also using a Wacom tablet to draw with, which allows me to do light pen pressure and harder pen pressure. If you'd like a tablet recommendation, I have one in the video description below. This tutorial assumes you already know the basics of Krita. If you don't know, check out my first video on Krita that goes over how to use this program. With that being said, let's get started animating. So to start with, after creating a new document, we want our animation windows to show up, like our timeline, our onion skin window. So the easiest way to do that is go under Window, Workspace, and then select Animation. And that'll set up everything that you need for animation. If you just want the animation windows themselves, it's going to be under Settings, Dockers, and then the ones we're going to need are Animation Curves, Animation Timeline, and Onion Skins. You'll also want to make sure that you have your Layers window visible as well. And you may find other windows in here that could be useful also. So first thing before we get started, we want to make sure we're on a new layer, which there should be a new layer by default with transparency. You can see this little checkerboard showing transparency. If we were to animate on this background layer, because it's filled in with white, it's going to get in the way of your onion skin and you won't be able to see your drawings before or after, which is very important for animation. So make sure you have a new layer. If you don't, you can click on this plus button down here and that'll make a new layer. So to get started with animation, we want to go down to our timeline, down to our animation layer, right click on the first frame and select create blank frame. And now we can draw our first frame of animation. Once you have your first frame drawn out, you can select frame number two, right click and select create blank frame to draw your second frame. And in order to animate, we need to be able to see what our previous drawing was. So we can do that by turning on this light bulb right here. And you'll see your previous drawing appears in red behind it, just like this. Your onion skin options are down here. So you can select how many onion skins previous or forwards are visible. And you can also change the color of your onion skins down here. So that's how to turn on and edit your onion skin. But let's say we didn't want to draw a whole new frame. Let's say we wanted to take the drawing we already had and edit it and move it around for our second frame. Well, instead of creating a blank frame, we can undo before we did that. We can right click and say create duplicate frame. And then what we could do is we can take our lasso tool and then just delete the sections that we're not going to use. And then we can turn on our onion skin, press Ctrl T to transform our drawing. And for this, I'm going to flip it horizontal, move it over here, maybe rotate it a little bit, just like that. And I'm going to change his expression so he's looking surprised or shocked at something happening over on screen right. Once you've got your two frames finished, you can turn off your onion skin and use the arrow keys to flip back and forth between them. If you ever want to change your hotkey settings, you can change those under Settings, Configure Krita, and then keyboard shortcuts. And then you just search for what you want to edit. So here we have next frame, which we can change to be period. And then previous frame we can set to be comma. And then press OK. And now those are our frame forwards and frame backwards buttons. If you want to move a frame, you can just click select it and drag it where you want it to be. And that'll change the timing of your frame. If you want to copy a frame, you can right click and select copy keyframes. And then right click and paste keyframes. Or you can click and drag while holding control, and that will also copy a keyframe. You can add a new blank keyframe with this button right here, or you can add a new duplicate frame with this button right here. Or to delete a keyframe, you can select this delete keyframe button right here. And one organization thing that I like to do is I like to color my keyframes. So these are our extremes. You can think of these as the storytelling poses. So usually I like to right click and color those red, and then I can tell what my keyframes are. So I want to do an in-between frame between these two. So I'm going to click and drag keyframe number two over here. And then I'm going to click in the middle between them and create a new blank frame for our in-between. I'm going to turn on our onion skin by clicking this light bulb right here. One thing to note when characters are turning their heads, what a lot of beginning animators might do is just do a completely perfect 50% in-between where their head just goes to the right just like this. But if you ask a friend to look over to the other side of the room, typically what you'll see them do is their head will go down a little bit 
and they'll close their eyes. And you'll get this arcing motion whenever someone turns their head to look in a different direction. So that's something that I'm going to keep in mind when I'm drawing this uh, breakdown pose between these two. Alright, so here I've got my breakdown drawing, which is my halfway drawing in between my two extreme key poses. So you can see his face goes down and then pops back up for his surprised expression. So for breakdown drawings, I usually like to color them as blue. Since they're not quite keyframes, they're more like specific in-betweens between my two keyframes. And if I were to indicate this on paper, usually what I do is I circle keyframes, and then for breakdowns, I underline them. So two more key poses that I usually do with every movement is an anticipation and an overshoot. So an anticipation is sort of like moving the opposite direction of the direction you're going to move. So you can think about like a baseball pitcher who leans back to throw the baseball and then swings forward when they throw the baseball. Same person who's hitting the baseball with a bat. They twist backwards before swinging forwards with the bat, right? So that's what an anticipation is. So even with a head movement like this one, that's a lot smaller of an action, there should still be a little bit of an anticipation there. So I'm going to control select these two frames and then move them down by one frame, giving us one blank in between. So for this drawing, because I want to reuse his head shape, I'm going to select create duplicate drawing. And that's going to create a new frame between this one and this one. So now I can use my lasso tool to delete all the parts that I don't want to use. So I'm going to turn on my onion skin. And because he ends up moving this direction, we want the anticipation to move a little bit in this direction first. So that's where I'm going to move this head. I'm going to select it, transform it, move it up a little bit, maybe rotate it. And for this anticipation, I'm also going to have him start to notice a sound coming from off screen in this direction. And for the hair, I'm going to have it kind of drag behind and stay relatively in the same spot as it was on our first frame, since it kind of gets dragged behind. Hair is something I'll often animate as a second pass because it's one of those floppy bits. Any bit that's like floppy, things like boobs or fat on a belly, is something I'd usually animate as a second pass after I get the main pass of the full body animated first. But for this example, we're keeping it pretty simple. So his body's going to be moving up just a little bit towards this direction. Same with his neck. All right, so this is our anticipation pose. If we turn off our onion skin and kind of flip back and forth, we can see that things are kind of moving the way they should be. It just moves subtly up in this direction, just like we were aiming for. And usually when I'm doing anticipations, I'll indicate it underneath just like this. Just write the word antic underneath my keyframe. And then same thing for this drawing. We want to have an overshoot. So I'm going to select this keyframe and move it one frame over and then do a blank keyframe right here. Turn on our onion skin, and in the case of this drawing, I only want to see the future drawing, so I'm going to modify my onion skins to only show one drawing to the future. And same thing, but the opposite direction, right? So he ends up in this pose, so we want him to go a little bit past his final resting pose for this overshoot. And we can indicate what drawing this is by doing a circle K for keyframe, and then usually I just write the letters overshoot like that. So we'll just draw his head going a little bit past like that. But his hair will have drag behind like this. Just flip back and forth. Maybe exaggerate the expression a little bit on this frame. And there we have our overshoot drawing. So now we have keyframe one, anticipation, breakdown, overshoot, and then settle into final keyframe. Oh, I also want to mark this as red. I kind of consider overshoots as another keyframe. So he notices something, turns over, and then changes expression. One last thing that'll really help your animation feel alive is having stuff like hair kind of take a few extra frames to settle in after the body has stopped moving. So we can do that by going one frame forward, making a duplicate frame, going one frame back, and then erasing his hair. Turn on our onion skin for the previous drawing and the next drawing. And just have it be in between your previous drawing and your next drawing, just like this. And we'll do this a couple of times, just so there's a few frames of settle. So there's one. So let's do that again. I'll drag this last keyframe just over one to give us one more in between. Click here, create a duplicate frame, erase his hair right here. Do another in between between these two drawings. 
turn off our onion skin and just see how this feels. So he turns around and then his hair settles into place. So if you want your animations to be better, having these things can help a lot. Having anticipation, overshoot, and then having floppy bits settle afterwards. If you have those elements, your animation's going to look so much better. So even just a simple head turn with a few extra drawings can really make things feel a lot more alive. Let's continue adding in-betweens. So where I like to add in-betweens is mostly in the anticipation. The longer you have in anticipation, the faster your movement into your next pose can be. So I'm going to hold down my mouse button and drag a selection across all of these keyframes and then move it down. Let's do by a couple frames like that. And then I'll add a blank frame here, turn on my onion skin, do a 50% in between here. Then I'll go one frame forward, create blank frame, do another 50% in between. So the closer these drawings are to each other, the more subtle and the smoother the animation is going to be. So if you see things popping, adding another in-between can help a lot. Also for these, since they are in-betweens, I want to make sure to remove color on them, just so I don't confuse them as keyframes. And then here I think I'm going to add an in-between from this key to this breakdown pose, just to smooth that out a little bit. Alright, so I think that'll look pretty good. If we frame by frame through it, it looks like this. Pretty nice. If we want to play our animation, right now it's going to play once and then keep playing until frame 100 or so. So there's a couple things you can do. You can create a selection box around your animation like this and press play and it'll just play that section. Or you can select this hamburger menu right here and select when the animation starts and when the animation ends and also what frame rate it is at. So we're going to have the animation end at frame 10 and you can see if I play it, it's pretty fast. Also, we have this option on called Drop Frames. If that is turned on, it's going to play your animation at speed, but if it can't display all the drawings at the same time, it's going to drop frames. So if you want to see every single frame, even if it's not the correct timing, you can turn that off and it'll play every single drawing. So you can see our animations playing pretty quick right now. Well, here's what a lot of Disney animators and old school animators did. This is called animating on ones, so we have one new drawing for every single frame. What a lot of old school traditional animation is done is called on twos. So every frame is actually exposed for two frames instead of one frame. So what we can do is we can drag a selection around our entire animation, move it down one, and then keep repeating that. But the easiest thing to do is select your entire animation, right click, go to hold frames, and select insert multiple hold frames. And then just set this as one, press OK. And now your animation is on twos. Well, except for this one, we can right click and go insert hold frame after that one. It'll add a hold frame just like that. And now if we set our animation to stop playing at frame 21, our animation now looks like this. Pretty cool. So animation on twos kind of has that traditional sort of old school look to it. So I'd really recommend animating in this way. If something's happening super quick, like a somersault or like some quick fighting action, that's when things would happen on ones. But for stuff like this, animating it on twos is a really good idea. Next, let's move on to how to motion tween with Krita. So first I'm going to do a rough sketch of the character, and then I'm going to turn the opacity down on that layer, and then we'll draw the body parts on top of it. And I'll make sure to separate the body parts by different layers. For example, in this one, we're going to do the head as one layer and then the body as a second layer. So now we've got our character all cleaned up. I'll show you how I cleaned it up over here. So this is my rough sketch, which I had underneath here. And then each body part that I wanted to be animated, I have separated by their ink layers and then their filled in color layers. And then I have both of those layers in a group. So you can do that by selecting both of these layers with shift select and then pressing control G to group them into a folder, just like this. And then I have a background that I added and a little circle that we're going to animate. So first off, we're going to animate this to a song. So to import a song into your animation, we want to go down to this speaker icon right here and we click on open audio. So you're going to need audio beforehand. If you want to record audio, you can always use your microphone and a free program like Audacity to record audio. I have a song already picked out that I'm going to import. And I find that 
WAV files usually work a bit better than .mp3 files, so if you're having trouble with audio, try converting it to a WAV file or making sure that you have a WAV file. And then we're going to click open, and then if we play it, we can hear our audio plays. And if we scrub through it, So this has added audio to our animation, but um, apparently the scrubbing doesn't work very good. I remember like an old version of Krita, the scrubbing worked fantastically, but here it's not functional. Um, apparently this is getting fixed on and might work in version 5.2, but as of now, the audio scrubbing seems to not work. So uh, just something to be aware of. I think somebody, I did some research and someone was saying version 3.3, or something the audio scrubbing works but then you're going back a bunch of versions so it's a bummer but what can you do um one solution might be to play and just see where the beats are since we're animating to music so let's make a new layer called beats and we'll do a new blank frame and we'll just do a little circle here on the top right corner whenever we hear a beat and one thing to note about this frame is it's gonna stay on the animation for the whole animation. So if you want a frame to disappear, you're going to have to create a blank frame when you want it to disappear. So now we have one frame where it shows up and then it disappears just like that. And it's going to control drag to copy those two frames over. So let's put the next one right about here. See how that feels. We'll repeat that. Alright, so it took a little bit of work, but we finally got our animation all beaded out. So anytime this blue dot appears, that's when we want to hit our beats. Also, I've got my timeline zoomed out. If you want to zoom in and out of your timeline, you just put your mouse right here and then drag in and out just like this to zoom in and out your timeline. So now that we've got our music all timed out and we've got our character split up into different body parts, let's motion tween something. So the first thing I'm going to start with is the head. So motion tween happens in this animation curves window right here. And to animate something with a motion tween, we first have to add what's called a transformation mask onto a layer. So here I've got my head group. If I select the group and then click this drop down next to the plus button right here, and then select add transform mask. What this means is I can add a transformation to this head object here and it applies it to this transformation mask object right here. So you can actually see I can toggle the visibility of that transformation mask on and off. So you can think of it as a layer that applies a transformation to your layer and that's what you're going to need anytime you want to motion tween something in Krita. So make sure you have your transformation mask selected, go down to your animation curves window right here, and then click this add keyframe button right here. And you'll see a whole bunch of options pop up over here on the left. However, if we were to select a layer just on its own without selecting a transformation mask and click this add keyframe button, you'll see the only thing we're able to animate is the opacity of a layer. So that's something to keep in mind is if you want to animate opacity, that's done on a layer itself. But if you want to animate position, rotation, scale, that has to be done on a transformation mask. So if we go back to our animation timeline and just drag our playhead to the next beat, which is on frame number nine right here, go back to our animation curve, add a keyframe, click once on the head, and you'll see transformation controls pop up. So now we can move this head and rotate it and then press enter. Now when we drag our playhead back and forth, you can see we have a motion tween. So the computer does all the in-betweens between these two keyframes for you. If we go back to our animation timeline, you can see these keyframes are showing right here on our transformation mask. So if we wanted to copy one of these keyframes, we can do the same thing by clicking the keyframe we want to copy, holding down control and dragging that keyframe to where we want it to be copied. Now we have a head that goes down and then back up. Pretty cool. So that's all you have to do for a motion tween, really. If we play this animation, however, it just goes back and forth in a linear movement, so there's no like favoring one keyframe or the other. It just equally moves back and forth from one to the other. It's pretty boring and doesn't feel very natural. So what we need to do is we need to add easing to this motion. So the way we want to edit the easing on this animation is we want most of the hang time to happen while his head is up and be a really hard impact when his head goes down. 
So one thing with these animation curves is it set a keyframe for all of these values, but we're not really animating every single one of these values. We're only animating like a couple or three of them. So we're going to hide every other control except for the ones that we're using. So the easiest curve to see is this position Y, which is this up and down movement. So I can select a keyframe by just clicking on it, and then I go up to here. Here's your three different interpolations. So there's Bezier curve interpolation, there's linear interpolation, which is what we have right now, and then there's hold constant value, or no interpolation. So I'll just show you that one right now, and I'll do the same thing for his position keyframe right here, as well as his rotation keyframe right here. So what that means... Um... Okay, it's being very weird. <laughs> um... If I scrub forward, there's still interpolation going on, but if I let go, then it snaps back to where it's supposed to be. So I guess as long as you're not scrubbing it, it's, it shows what it's supposed to be doing. I don't know. What was supposed to happen is I scrub and it doesn't move at all. Right now, a lot of these features are kind of janky on the Motion Tweens panel. In recording this tutorial, I found a lot of really janky issues with this animation curve window, and it was a little bit finicky to use. Hopefully it's going to be better in future versions, so just something to be aware of that this window's not as good as it could be. So anyways, with that out of the way, let's continue on with how to do easing on your animation. So to edit the easing of my animation, first I'm going to isolate what property I want to edit the easing on. For this example, I'm going to do his Rotation Z property. So right now this curve looks very flat, right? But there's actually motion going on. To view the curve as a whole, you can click this button up here. And then you can click to select the first keyframe, and then press this Bezier Handle button up here. And that'll create a hollow handle that you can then pull out and modify your easing this way. So you kind of have to eyeball it, which is not the best. Hopefully this will be easier in the future. You could just push a button, but this is how you favor one keyframe or the other. So the way we're bending this is it's going to favor the outside keyframes. And then in the middle keyframe, it's going to be really quick and bounce back to the end keyframes. So let's apply this same easing to all of our other body parts. And we'll also make sure to copy these keyframes by control dragging them on the timeline. And then once we're all done, let's see how it looks by exporting our animation as a movie. So the first thing we're going to want to get before we can export animation in Krita is FFmpeg. So if you search for FFmpeg, the first result should be the correct one. So it's FFmpeg.org and you're going to want to have it for exporting animation from Krita. So this is the way the website looks for me. There's a big download button right here. We're just going to click on that. And then you'll want to download the version for whatever operating system you're using. I'm using Windows. So either one of these links should work. It should be the same thing. I'm just going to click the first link and then just follow the instructions to get the correct download. So here is FFmpeg Essentials. I'm just going to get Essentials. And you'll need an unzipping program like 7-zip in this case to open it. So if I open up the zip file, go inside the folder, this is all the stuff that makes up FFmpeg. So here's what I recommend you do. So I have a folder on my C drive called FFmpeg. So I actually right click, made a new folder, and I named it FFmpeg. Then inside of that folder, I extracted all of this stuff into that folder. And then if we go into this bin folder, that is where we're going to see ffmpeg.exe. So this is the file that you're going to want to direct Krita to when you're exporting your animation. So after we have ffmpeg on our computer, we're going to go up to File, Render Animation, and instead of Image Sequence, we're going to select Video. And if this is your first time doing it, this ffmpeg will probably be blank. So what you want to do is click this folder icon to navigate towards ffmpeg. And on my computer, it's under C. FFmpeg, bin, and then select ffmpeg.exe and press open. And that should be the only time you have to do that. You can just kind of set it and then forget it. And then here's our options of what kind of video we can render. So we can render MPEG videos, WebM videos, all sorts of different formats. We can do GIFs. For this example, we're going to do an MPEG video, which will save it as an MP4. And we're going to make sure to check include audio since we do have audio with this animation. And we'll click OK. And now we sit back and wait for it to render. Ah. And if we open our animation up. Yeah. 
So that's it. That's how you animate in Krita. There's some things that'll be updated in the future, I'm sure, like hopefully scrubbing and also the animation curve window will be fixed and a little bit more usable in the future, but it's still freaking awesome. I really like using Krita a lot and I want more people out there to use it. It's free. If you want to animate, it's a great way to learn how to do animation on. Uh, if you'd like to check out more of my stuff, check out the links in the description below. Uh, make sure to subscribe, like the video if you thought this was helpful. And uh, until next time, guys, take it easy, take care, and uh, bye bye Be sure to click here to subscribe to my channel to stay updated on future videos and tutorials. If you'd like to help support my work, you can click here to visit my Patreon page. You also get access to rewards like early access to tutorials, source animation files, and access to a secret Patreon-only chat room. Keep on animating, and until next time, uh, bye bye